Sing me more songs about Jesus Cause I am a big Jesus fan Sing me more songs about Jesus My Savior, Jesus Christ What a man And you're listening to Jesus Christ, That's Funny. <laughs> My name is Ethan Moore, and I'm here with uh, Pastor Dwayne Black. Hey, how you doing, huh? How you doing, Pastor? I'm sick, but I'm, uh, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good right now. I'm glad that you were able to, to you know, actually pull it together to record today. <laughs> we, we've missed a couple weeks here, so we've been on hiatus, let's say. Well, you've been, you were in New York, weren't you? Uh, I was, yeah, I was gone, and then I, w- I went to, uh, I was in Tampa. Tampa, right, um, okay. And uh, for for Thanksgiving, and I'm actually going to Tampa again tomorrow, right? For a little early Christmas. That'll be nice. Visit my mom. My mom. Yeah. yeah. Good. But uh, and then you got sick, so it was just. Uh, I know. I got this cold that's going around, and it just hangs in there. Right. You and said never, you got the cough drops over there. I got cough drops. I got uh, I got tea. I got uh, Perrier. I'm I'm set. I'm ready. Okay. So um, if you hear a little coughing into the microphone, just pay no mind. I'll, I'm, I'll hide. You know what? We'll edit that out. No yeah. one will know. No one. No. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you look good. You look like you're on the on the road to recovery. Well, thanks. I, yeah, and I, you know, I do like your hair. I really do. I don't know what's <laughs> going on with that, but uh, it is. Um, it's a little out of control right no, now. No, 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 no. It's 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 um, it's something. I don't. It's, know. <laughs> it's just a weird length because it's, it's good. I'm growing it it's out. Good. So it's like. Are you going to grow it long? Yeah. 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 Good. Okay. Yeah, you know, like, uh, like, like Jesus. Well, yes, just like Jesus. Yeah. You know, and you, and, and would you allow any of those pictures that I saw of you, uh, that you look like Jesus for oh, the Halloween stand up? Yeah. Yeah. Would I allow them? Yeah. It would be, you know, put on the web, you know, Well, I posted them on my yeah. own social media, so I know, but uh, you know. I allow them in that sense, <laughs> I guess I'm, I, I, yeah, uh, I, I endorsed them. They, they were good. They were really good. Them. Yeah. I, well, you know, I, I wanted to use, um, the one of them for the, the logo, of of this podcast, Jesus Christ, that's funny, and you kind of were like, well, maybe, yeah. <laughs> so we didn't. But I, I did, liked your other logo. You did that was really the, good. Yeah, the JCTF. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. How about if uh, our listeners write in? You can uh, you can contact us at Jesus Christ, that's funny at gmail dot com, and let us know whether you like the JCTF logo or the logo of me as Jesus wearing a <laughs> crown of thorns with no shirt. Uh, Which one do you like yeah. better? <laughs> I have an inkling uh, that, uh, that could, <laughs> it's going to be the text <laughs> logo. <laughs> People uh, uh, that could really hurt, man. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Don't hurt my feelings, everyone. <laughs> That's right. No, I, I, someone told me that, um, uh, my dad, I think it was, that uh, <laughs> he's like, you're going to have tro- trouble getting a real job <laughs> if you post things like that. Uh, like yeah, that. if they do, if they ever go back and do like a little research on you and they're going, uh, so what exactly is this? Hey, like I'll just say I'm a Jesus fan. That's right. I, I you know? love Jesus, and so I dress up like him. Sometimes. I am. Yeah. Once again, I'm a Jesus fan. You know, that's I, I like that. I, I'm not a Christian, but I'm a Jesus fan. I like that. That's good. Hey, that's who's good. not a Jesus fan? That's what I want to know. That, <laughs> lots, of, lots of Christians when it comes down to it, I think. Oh. <laughs> uh, is that what you want to talk about? No, you know, I, I, I don't know. Was, um, Didn't Jesus have a few things to say about that? Yeah. Something about lukewarm and spitting. Yes, I that was good. That was, was good. That was good. It was, yeah. what, what was it? How, do you, how does it go? No, no. no and we're not going to go there? No, uh-uh. Okay. No. Well, Jesus I, said something about how if, you, if you're not to- totally into him, then um, he's going to spit you out or something. I don't know. Spit it out. That's right. Into, directly into the lake of fire, presumably. <laughs> no, you know, it's just as it's you just The devil's right. spittoon. <laughs> yeah. You run into so many Christians that that say they're you know followers, and and the th- the, their actions um, probably say that they're not very good Christians when it really comes down to it, and uh, and their judgment, their hatred, their uh, ability to um, to find fault with people that aren't like them or don't look like them, or maybe uh, maybe understand God by a different name. Uh, that's that's tough nowadays. You're sounding pretty judgmental right now. No, I'm not. I'm worried about them. I'm worried about them. I'm worried about fear. I think I think that 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 was one of the big things that uh, that was said. That you know, that if if God is truly love, then what is uh, what's the opposite of love? And usually you think it's hatred, but really, uh, it states in the scriptures very clearly that uh, the opposite of love is abstinence. No. Oh no, just a guess. <laughs> that was good. Yeah. Oh. 
The opposite of love is fear. And we seem to be fueling a lot of fear around here nowadays. Okay. Uh, t- tell me about that. What, do you, what, are, you, what are you referring to? <clears throat> uh, I would think probably the whole um, issue with, um, with terrorism and, uh, and fear and a fear of it and a fear of a, of a religious group of people that, um, that, that I don't see where that leads to uh, a healthy way of living. And what group of what religious people? I mean, you lost me. Muslims, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, Muslims. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Well, here we are recording in uh, December yeah. 2015, and yeah. there's been a couple of uh, an incident. I don't really watch the news, but I saw there was something in uh, Paris, I think it was, and then yeah, then yeah. recently there was another something in California, California. Yeah. and uh, people are afraid yep. about that, and uh, uh, I guess one of the things that people are afraid of about the um, the California thing is it was it I was think it was like at a, a, a mental health yeah something yeah. it was just some random you know government office I think or, or not even government maybe it was just a some kind of treatment center I don't know it was yes. something like that so it was just some bureaucratic workers and then they get attacked and if that's um, what the uh, Islamic terrorists are attacking then it makes no no one feel safe because it's like well I work in an office and you know what I mean? It's like I'm not I'm not going out there picking fights with right. with uh Islamic extremists. You know what I mean? It's not like in um like there was that uh uh that thing in in Den- Denmark or something where they had a, some kind of cartoons. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Right? Or was it France? I don't know. There's some kind of place in Europe where there was some cartoons is it cartoonists that got attacked for drawing pictures of the Prophet Muhammad. Right. Exactly. And so then it's like, well they sort of you know that you can make the argument well people are like well i'm not out there drawing cartoons you know right. so, but then if but if not that anyone should be afraid to draw cartoons obviously i believe in free speech but um i, I feel like it makes no one feel safe it's like you, even if you're not doing something actively you know against whatever people's religion is then you still feel like they could just attack you because you are an american and you happen to be in america or you're in the West and you happen to be a Westerner or something well, think, like that? You know, I think that's part of the question is that you, you, we have a very um, – we, we, our, our understanding, our, our actual ability to look back into history is very short. Um, I mean, you can see almost every religion has had a time or a place or a peace that they have you know, persecuted another group of people. Um, and so you've, you see that throughout history as you go back, even, even to the point of uh, religion – uh, persecuting people of color or people who are gay or people, you know, so, yeah. you know, and, and killing them and beating them and, you know, all of those things. So you kind of have to look back and say, well, wait, 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 there must be some reason. It's not just because you are a Westerner and you um, have a nice car or something that these group, this group of people dislike you enough to lose their life. But just some, they dislike some random person in an office right. enough to lose it. Well, what, so you need to, you know, we need to first go back and really be honest about how that all started and where that all is coming from. How, where did it come from? Well, why do you think, why do you think there's a group of people that dislike us? What, what do you think the basis of that is? Why do people, but I'm just saying, so there, there's a, uh, I guess a political debate and uh, here we are in pol- talking about politics. Oh, I, I didn't talk- want to do that. I hate talking time. about politics, politics faster. Yeah. No, I, I always just feel like it's like politics aren't funny. <laughs> first of all, it's like people <laughs> arguing about like, look at my pie chart. It shows that you're a jerk, yeah. you know, and that's like this politics is and, uh, it's boring. So it's like people get really angry about something boring. So it's like, that's not funny at all. And then second, it's like, uh, it's very divisive, obviously. <laughs> so it's like people, people are listening and they'll say, well, I disagree with the pastor's comments about uh, uh, whatever you just said about Muslims. So then I won't listen to anything he says about how funny right. Jesus is. Why do we do that, too? Why do we get to a, a, a position where because you disagree, we can't continue a conversation? Why does it get to a point where it's, it's us and them, that type of, um, where does that come from? Um, well, that's like a question, a deep question about human nature, I guess. But, yeah. but um, you know, it, it is a fact, you know, I mean, in the sense that I think, wasn't it, uh, Kierkegaard used to talk about that, how uh, once someone is standing, um, you know, there's like, when, there's, when someone has a gap and you can't, you can't 
cross it. I can't remember how that goes. Uh, but uh, who else talked about it? Richard Rorty, the yeah. philosopher. Yeah. He used to talk about religion as a conversation stopper. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Right. So in other words, someone says, "Well, I think this um, about um, you know, I think, uh, for example, uh, birth control should be illegal." And then someone says, well, no, that's, there's all these facts and figures why it shouldn't be, and look, it improves people's lives. And then someone says, well, that's, I'm just a Christian, and that's what I believe in. It's like, well, I have no rejoinder to that. Right, right, right. right. And I feel like um, politics also is, to some extent, a conversation stopper, because what happens is people just have their entrenched beliefs, and if you're not going to reinforce them, then, you know, I think, like, people hold on to, first of all, their religion is the thing that they hold on to more. And then second, maybe a second to that is maybe like politics. Because I think politics, people feel like it's about their family. Uh, what I mean is um, politics, it always seems to come down to something about people talk about how um, this affects their lives and their family. So in other words, like if you raise taxes on me, that makes it harder to feed my children or something like that. You know, or if you aren't, you know, if, if we aren't doing this in the Middle East, then I feel less safe. My family's less safe. Right. So I feel like politics always comes down to like self-interest and interest of the person's family. So it's like after religion, family is probably what people hold most dear. So maybe that's why they hold these these political positions. But then why you can't convince so 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 anyway, so if someone's holding on to a position really strongly whether it's religious or political, once they're holding on to it strongly, it's really difficult to convince them that, you know, with like even if you have facts and figures that they're wrong because well, they also have all these mutually uh, reinforcing structures around them like they're going to have friends and family that have simil similar political positions they're going to be reading certain kinds of political literature or whatever watching certain TV channels and so they, it all gets kind of mutually reinforced as a, as a world view and then it's difficult to break through that with just one piece of information the only thing maybe that can change it is um if people have some kind of catastrophic, disastrous break with the past and things, things really seem, everything seems to change. Right. Or sometimes, like I said, maybe religion is stronger than politics sometimes. Some people might be able to make a change on their politics based on some kind of religious revelation well, yeah, or something I mean, like that. Yeah, I would think. I mean, you know, there's this, uh, there's this story about um, in, in the scriptures in the Old Testament about Jonah. And it, um, <clears throat> in the very beginning of it, he's a, a prophet. And, um, and he's told to go to Nineveh. And in Nineveh, he's supposed to preach to them he, uh, for them to repent. And he doesn't want to do it. He doesn't want to do it. Because what he is is he's a nationalist. He, he believes that his, his God needs to punish these people. And God seems to be a universalist. That, that all of these people on, in this world are his children. So now you've got to deal with it on a, a, a larger basis. That, that God wants them to repent. In fact, in fact, when he ends up and finally in Nineveh, he's like the worst prophet there is. And he's, you know, he like walks halfway into the city and goes, uh, repent. You have 40 days. Okay, see ya. Bye. I'm out of here. Oh, he doesn't. He, no, he, he doesn't he, do anything. He's just like, really? he's, yeah. So he's like, you know, and suddenly these people just repent. They change. They, you know, oh, we need to get right with God. We need to, you know, and they change and they go, everything changes. And so. Why, why do they, why do they repent? Well, they believe that they were not. So he's a lackluster convincer. But it was horrible. But, but, he was the worst. So he does. Does he have like really good ideas, and in spite no. of him, they prevail? Or? No. Yeah. Well, I mean, he he goes in and he he doesn't want them to repent. He wants God's. He would really probably like God to come down with fire and thunder and burn them all up. What a, you know, what a he jerk. Wants, well, you know, he <laughs> he wants to punish them, I'm and glad God he, doesn't seem to be this type I'm, of God. I'm glad he got at by that whale. That's. <laughs> He deserved it. Uh, what kind of prophet uh, is this? Yeah. So, well, I love it because because it really does start to you know because I think that that as Christians we become really quickly uh, about nationalists. You know, we become we don't see things in the universal way, and that is that that uh, those Muslim brothers and sisters of ours are God's children, and somewhere along the line we have to we the way we believe and the person we follow is calling us to d be different in this world and so are, we're not are you just comparing different. are you saying that the people who don't who want to like like so for example like one of the presidential candidates i heard this week said that we should get not let muslims into the country or something like that like, right. like uh, donald trump said Can that you, yeah yeah and so you're saying he's like jonah 
like he wants he's to a nationalist yeah in the sense that yeah so he's you're saying donald trump says oh we don't want Muslims. so he wants to see them fail but or christians who he well, wants to crush them he wants to punish them right so that's like uh like jonah but but uh god's love has to prevail yeah and i mean if we, if, if we truly believe that god is love then we have and we believe and we follow this guy jesus who who was crucified and on the cross he says to people forgive them for they don't know what they're doing i mean right. somewhere along the line that has to hit to us and say you can't say i'm going to follow this guy and at the same way say we got to go to war this way yeah i mean they, they just don't match up i think uh it's back to that thing of family people have a hard time you know, maybe if it, if everyone was just like, well, it's just me. Like for like for example, like I'm I'm single guy. Right. You know, I mean, like I don't have a family to support. For example, right. like my brother and my sister are both. My sister's actually expecting a, her first child soon. Yeah. Yeah, nice. that's exciting, right? And uh, my so my brother has two uncle. kids. Okay, you are. An I'll uncle. be an uncle three times over yeah. here soon, and uh, so, you know, like I feel like for either of them, it's like they have more on the line. You know, and they have to protect their family. So I feel like I understand if they're sort of making decisions a little bit more in terms of I want to protect what's mine or protect what's what's my family's. Um, whereas I could say like, oh yeah, just turn the other cheek. You know, like if someone like, sure, we might be a little bit more in danger if we we do X Y Z to make things easier for the right. Muslims, which is the argument, right? Well, the argument, I guess, is that. If we d- aren't hard on the Muslims, then we're less safe. And we, and That's the basic <coughs> idea, I but think. But when, right? when we paint that large thing of saying, I'm not Muslim, saying it's true. You know, but that's the idea. It's not Muslim. It's it's a small, finite group of people. No, of course. Know? But I'm just saying that's the idea, right? So yeah. the idea is that we need to. So if we're not harsh with this group of people, then we're less safe. You know, so I, what I'm saying is I can understand the appeal of that kind of argument to someone who has a family to protect. But does that if, really work? I mean, does that thinking really work? Well, has that, it worked in the past? Well, that's, that a, that's a separate question. See, because the question you asked was about whether, um, you know, all these people are God's children. children yeah. And do we owe them something and shouldn't we be? You know what I mean? Right. So it's like you're the, the question is, is the risk of is the risk of, um, you know, opening our arms to a group of people, even though some of them might want to hurt us. Right. Is that worth it? Right. And you say, well, yeah, because we're all God's children. So right. we, of course we have to do it. And then, but then they might say, well, I'm not going to make my family less safe. I don't want to, I don't want to add any risk to the risk right. that I have in my life against my family. You see what I'm saying? That's the, that's w- the, that's where the conflict goes. But now, if that- I, now I can, to me, I don't have a family and I can say, sure. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, yeah, I don't. But if I had kids, I feel like I might think about it differently. Really? Well, I might. I would I would have to consider it. You know, I'd have to say, well, you know, is it? I, I feel like what happens when people have kids is, is they, they, they're like, no additional risk for my children is safe. I actually don't. I think this is bad. I think it's bad for society. Right. But people think that way because, of course, it's impossible to eliminate risk. And what it does is it creates an opportunity for whatever politicians or whoever to say, Hey, uh, marketing firms or whatever, anyone who can, mm-hmm. they can come out and say, this will make your kids a little more safe. Then they can sell that idea. Absolutely. You know, and it's scary. <laughs> it's scary you know, <coughs> that, 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 that can be sold so easily. So it's like, but that's true. But, but you right. can see why people fall, yeah. fall victim to it, I guess is because I just imagine you want to protect your, your family. Yeah. I you mean, know? I don't know how you like even get in a car and drive out there right now because you know, you could, the fear level is so high. I mean, you know, uh, there could be somebody who wants to just run into you. You know, there's people not paying attention. There, I mean, we can get to a point where fear, it, it affects our future well, and our dreams it's, and you everything know, it, it's about It's funny it. that you brought up the idea of driving, too, because that's, it, it's like, uh, come on, are you going to get killed in a terrorist attack? <sighs> Probably not. Yeah. Are you going to die in an automobile accident? Definitely. Yes. If you're listening. <laughs> in fact, uh, look out right now. <laughs> whoever, if you're behind listening, you, behind you. Yeah. Um, because that is like, definitely, like people die in a car all the time. Right. Are you going to die because of like congestive heart failure? Definitely. You know what I mean? That's what you die of. But it, you die of heart failure and cancer and, and uh, automobile wrecks. That's right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or smoking. Right. or like That's what you're going to die of. The people that die of terrorist acts, uh, acts is like, 
you know, a tiny, tiny fraction of like the number of people that die every day on the road. Yes. Right. Yeah. So, and what, it, and it's like, so we're not very good at evaluating our risks. No. And no. See, so then that's the other argument too. You can, so you can make that argument of, uh, I th- of the one we were talking about before where it's like, well, there's this, you know, it'll, I won't add any more risk to my life. Right. Right. But then you could also look at it and say, yeah, but I'm already putting so much on the line every time I take you know what I mean? Every time I, I, I get on the road. Right. Like, right. wouldn't a better solution for my family, what if I um, voted for politicians that would uh, make mass transportation so I wouldn't have to take my car out on the road? What right. if there were, you know, elevated trains all over South Florida so you could just get on a train and go from, you know, Fort Lauderdale to Miami every 10 minutes the way you can, let's say, in like San Francisco or New York? You know what I mean? Like, right, yeah. Like, I, I lived in San Francisco for, for five years. I lived in Singapore for three years. I never worried never about driving. I just got on the subway. Right, exactly. And I, never, and I felt way safer not having to drive. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, we're not good at... But that's like evaluating, a, evaluating risks. Yeah. And we, it's hard to look at things that way. And when you have politicians who are basically building on those fears of like, we need... We are at war. We, you know, and, you're, you know, and you hear it. 24 hours, seven days a week, people start to get scared over stuff that you're like, going, you know what? This is not healthy. This is not how, this is not how we're supposed to live. And they had, and that was the same fear was what they did. You know, when, when the, when we were in a situation with, with blacks finally starting to get votes and, and, and that whole, you know, with Dr. King and the whole thing, there was all this fear mongering that was going on of like, we can't let them get out of where we got to con- put them back where they belong. There was, a, so you run into this thing that fear, it really does. It drives out love. And when it drives out love, we don't care about the person. We make the person a demon. We make them, and you know, and that's where we can do anything to them. We want at that point. Um, we validate doing anything we need to. Well, I think the, like, question you know the med- the ultimate question about muslims you know politics aside right right is what is the question that you're you're, you're talking about and that the question that i think is underneath all of this like you, you know all, everything that you've said today hmm. which is what's the right thing to do you know what i mean like in other words if you look at uh all human beings as being your brother right right or sister then um oh no 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 just 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 the men, men just the okay men. okay yeah. that's right and yeah. um wives submit to your husbands i remember that's, that being right, in there that's somewhere good, yeah. too it's underlined and highlighted yeah. right in your bible yeah, definitely right <laughs> <laughs> you pull it out anytime your yeah. your wife asks you yeah, to, to, right. to clear the table yeah, that's right yeah. honey honey need I'm i remind sorry. you yeah right <laughs> Uh, and by if, the way, uh, my wife is listening to this. I'm laughing at a joke. <laughs> <laughs> but he did ask me to ask you to make him a sandwich. That's it. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah. anyway, oh, no, yeah. it's, it's, so all, all uh, men are our brothers and women are our sisters. And, yes. Uh, you know, and if you're transgender, then you're whichever one uh, you want to be. And uh, so then if you look at things that way, we're all God's children, then <coughs> we can say that there's a moral question and the moral question is um you know how am i to treat my my brothers and sisters or how am i supposed to treat my neighbor you know right and the answer is with love and that doesn't that question doesn't say that there are exceptions for people that are muslims or people that are black or people that are uh democrats or republicans or uh you know underprivileged or 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 rich or whatever so the point is that um if you say that it's just it's certain things are just wrong, like it's wrong to allow um, people, it's lo- like so. For example, to talk about politics, like it, it's wrong to vote for politicians who are going to do bad things to people based on the fact that they're a right. particular group, right? right? Something right. like that. You could say, you know what I mean. You can make an argument that that you can say, well, that's the, what I believe. You know, that's the um, the moral thing to do is to treat them well. And right, if, you, if if I say I am a follower of the way, of this Jesus way, then I can't, I'm either, I'm either a Christian who's trying to follow the way, or I'm a Christian who doesn't follow the way, and I may not be achieving really following. And, and, my, and, and I should be called on it, too. You know, like, listen, 
if you're really going to try to do it this way, this is one of the things that makes it difficult. It's not easy. Right. You know, it's not easy. And that's, that's good. I mean, what, yeah, there's laws of nature, right? What's that? There Law- are laws of nature. Laws of nature. Yeah. I've heard of that. Yeah. So, and, and, and it used it's to like be... like a Catholic thing, right? Yeah. Well, no, they used to... <laughs> It used to be thought like great thinkers would talk about laws of nature. They talked about, um, you know, that there are laws that you and I have set up between us. And that is that I'm not going to steal anything of yours and you're not going to steal anything of mine. But really laws of nature are really more things like gravity. You know, that uh-huh. if, I had, if I hold you up 10 feet and I hold a rock up 10 feet, both of you are going to respond to the laws of nature. And that is gravity. Boom. Physics. Yeah. And so there comes a point when you start talking about the laws or morals, m- morality, right. um, that, that you, you start saying, are there, are there ways that I start to say, I know I shouldn't kill you and you shouldn't kill me, but I will allow this to happen or I will allow that person. We start, we start making grayer and wider lines uh, in, in our morality and the way we understand how we deal with each other. And that's some of the big questions that, that we should be, as a nation, looking at. We should be saying, wait, 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 wait. We're drawing awful big gray areas here, and we need to look at how, how we got here, what we did to that other country, what we did to the other groups of people, and, and were those the right ways of doing things? You know, you can't, you can't look at Afghanistan and say, we didn't, we left that place in a very, very vulnerable place situation with other warlords we did we did and and it's okay to be to say that we didn't do a good job there you know right well we can go into that debate but i think you still <laughs> you know what i mean but i think we should uh, we won't save it for okay. a future episode or just never yeah. ever talk about it that would be that fun. <laughs> no uh but no i mean i like i i think that that's se- separate in a way from this question about um, you know, how are you going to treat people? And I, I, I think, um, because that's like a question about what, what do we do right now? You know what I mean? You can right. go back to the past and be like, well, this happened and then this happened and the Democrats did this and the Republicans or whatever. I think it's, you know, or we should have invaded here. We shouldn't have invaded. And I think there are probably good answers to those questions to some extent. But, but, um, but I think the question in front of us today that you're, you've, you've brought up is, you know, how should we treat these people that are, um, let's say that people that are Muslims, if they're right. Americans or even if they're just living here. And, um, I, I, but I think the chat, so like I said, I mean, you can look at it and say, well, I, well, morally the right thing to do is to treat them as if they're our, our brothers. Like if I'm a Jesus fan, that's right, what I have right. to believe. Right. But you could also say, I think there's the other side of this, which is, I think people say, well, there's this. So that's, I, so when I meet one, I will. <laughs> you know what I mean? But uh, as far as allowing the government to do what they need to keep me and my family safe, I'm going to, uh, you know what I mean? I'm going to vote for politicians that are going to do that too. And that might include locking people up without a trial or kicking people out of the country without due process or something like that. Right, right, right. So if you're, but then the question, I think, so it's like, so then you create, the, what happens is people are able to separate out what the government is doing on all these individual bases from their individual life and how they interact with people. They say, I'm going to treat people fine when I meet them, but I'm also going to endorse this policy which doesn't treat people very well. And there's where it gets tricky because, you know, you're sort of, you're you're kind of washing your hands a little bit, right? It's a little bit of a Pontius Pilate situation. You are, you are. So then what's the answer? Um, You know, I, I guess the only answer I can think of is, is okay. So there's a distinction between your personal relationships with people and sort of your politics, I guess there has to be. And I guess the politics side of it has to come from what you think is really right for your country to do. And the, the personal side of it comes from what you, what do you think is right for you to do as an individual person? Right. So uh, the individual stuff as a person, you, you, you figure that out. But since we're talking about the, the political side, I guess there, the only answer I can come up with is that you have to come up with some version of politics that you think fits with you as a person. You know what I mean? And that, and that is, has respect for the ideals that you believe your country should let up, live up to. And maybe to some extent for the ideals that the country has historically had. So maybe you could, you want to say, like for me, I would say, well, it's it, okay. So I'm an American and I always was taught that everyone's equal. Right. And that everyone deserves like a fair, the same chance. 
right. you know, and that everyone deserves to um, be able to have due process when something is, you know, when, um, when there's a, a legal question about some kind of something that's going to happen to them, like whether it means they're going to be kicked out of the country or whether they're going to be put in prison, any of those kind of things. Those things are all part of the version of America that I was brought up to believe in. Right. 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 So, and they also fit with my personal feeling about that people should be treated well. You know, people should have their, their rights respected. So that's, so, you know, so what I mean? So I have a hard time endorsing a policy about the, the, the Muslims or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Like if that's what well, and, and don't you think that Trump that's, is saying. Yeah. Well, don't you think that that's, saying? that's one of the situations that we have to, we have to embrace that, that maybe we're not. I think that, that when we blind ourselves to things that we have done in the past or things that we uh, tend to do in the future, um, we will repeat the same mistakes. I mean, there there is a point of, you know, um, everyone should uh, have an equal chance. Well, as long as you're not, you know, Muslim or, you know, you're black or, you know, I mean, that's what you have a group of politicians right now, you know, feeding on the, it's like a feeding frenzy of hatred. You know, and and you're like, this is not what we're about. You know, you have you have Serbians that that are their war torn country. You know, is is being destroyed, and they need a place to go. And you got people going, nope, not here. You know, well, wait. You know, I mean, Serbians, wait. Yeah. Are Syrians? Yeah. Are they Serbians too? Serbians, yeah. Oh, oh man, we've got all Syrians. these people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so uninformed. I can't even believe that I'm. <laughs> You got me to talk about this stuff. I'm like the least qualified person. No, no, no. no. I'm just trying to figure it out here as we go. But, uh, yeah. But, I, but the, see, but uh, you, you said this isn't funny, and it is. Is it I funny? Mean, yeah, yeah. Every comic on television right now is doing something on this. Every one of them, you know. What's what's yeah. the, what are some of the jokes? Oh, who was it last night? They had a they had one that was a Donald Trump book, and he had Donald Trump on, and it was uh, a Donald Trump thing saying. Um, something about uh, I'm a winner and dogs are losers, and uh, and it was it was a hysterical book. I mean, it really was, um, and and it was it was this kind of attitude of you know this is the greatest country in the world and we are going to get back on top of things and we're going to push people down and we're not going to allow them into our country and we're going to build walls and we're going to you know all this conversation that that you're like where did the Christianity f- fall out of this thing of of people who Again, we become nationalist and not universalist, where we understand that everyone is a child of God. That's that's where we run into the problem. Suddenly, it's what about America? Well, I think it's that, and so then it's that same thing where people are able to say, "Well, this is when I individually encounter people, I will treat them well." But my politics says that these people have to go. You know, and I I guess. so how do you draw that line? Where is that line drawn? Well, I, I guess if you look back at history, um, ultimately that line is not something that you can hold. Because, yeah. um, you know, like, for example, look at, like, the abolition movement. Right. You know what I mean? Like, it's like you got people for years and years in America, in the South, let's say, saying, uh, yeah, I treat my slaves well. <laughs> yeah. Right? So I mean, mm-hmm. So I'm a good slave holder. You know what I mean? Right. And I treat my slaves in a Christian way. Right. Uh, but I support this policy of slavery. Right. And and, and, you know? and they had the Bible to back it up, too. That yeah. Was, you know. So then ultimately, people, there's enough people who say, well, we can't, you can't really say that you're, because the abolitionist movement was, was, was spearheaded by Christians. Yes. Right? Yeah. So yeah. ultimately, there's a lot of people saying that one of the biggest arguments against slavery in America is it's not Christian. Right, it's not you can't treat these these people um, differently. You can't treat them them badly, um, and you can't endorse a policy that allows them to be treated badly, no, and unfairly and unjustly, uh, even if you treat yours well. Right, you know, so that line between the personal and the political, ultimately, is, it it starts to collapse. I think, and yeah, and, and people end up saying well, this is not a good thing but we did fight a war <laughs> <laughs> we did so here we are and that of course changed everybody you know i mean immediately you know we continue to think that wars change you know mindsets and they don't they don't change mindsets um you know the, the you know you, you look at you know i have a book over in my office that has pictures of you know um the different groups who were that were fighting for you know 
that blacks should be able to drink from the same water fountains, that they should be able to go to the same schools, that they should be able to vote. And, and you see us taking fire hoses, us meaning white individuals, taking fire hoses. No, it was me. I, I'm sorry about that. I, <laughs> yeah. I was actually there. I, you were there? <laughs> sorry about the fire hose. <laughs> and, and it was. I mean, but there's a point where you're kind of like, you know, well, so how do you, how do you justify this understanding of Jesus? And that maybe that's the real thing is that we don't understand what Christianity really is. I mean, we've talked about it before that, you know, that it maybe shouldn't be called Christianity anymore. It should be called the way, which was it originally was. It's a different way of living, you know, and we continue to drag it back into, well, we can do anything we want. We just, you know, close our eyes to it or find a verse that we can bite into and, you know, yeah. Well, keep it simple, I guess, is what people want. Yeah, well, that may be. But I heard from a guy named Jonah that there's uh, some Jonah. kind of judgment. Coming fast. If you it's don't. Coming down. <laughs> if you don't re- reform your ways. Um, it's salt, people of pillars, and uh, the, fire. Uh, different, different, yeah. But the, and, yeah, you're, um, some kind of s- sand flies. Yeah. I think he wanted, I think, he, I think Jonah actually wanted it. He wanted, like, God. You know, because you know, prophets, crickets. Yeah, prophets are prophets are like the guys. You know, they're like going, like you know, come on, God, give me, give me something. I'm going after it. You know, give me a, give me a direction. And and Jonah, you know, gets this direction. Nineveh, a horrible city, you know, filled with just you know death and destruction and sacrifices and and um, and he runs the other way because he doesn't want that grace poured out upon them. He doesn't right. want them to change. He wants them punished. And so, you know, what do we learn from, from a story like that? You know, we learn that God is a God of forgiveness and grace. And, and, and that's not something we want. What if, what if tomorrow, you know, you had um, all the terrorists, you know, said, you know, well, we're actually repenting. You know, whoa, whoa, whoa. We want a little punishment yet. We? Well, if you, if you murder someone, then once they, you know, convict you in front of a jury of your peers and you say, I'm sorry, they don't. I'll yeah. never do it again. They still hang you. Yeah, well, well they, you know, and that's a whole other issue of, you know, why we put people to death. And, and or whatever. The point is that you, you still are serving a, a sentence or so. You know what I mean? There's some sort of legal penalty even well, if, you, yeah. re, if you are remorseful. Absolutely. If I've done something that that um, <clears throat> that I have to pay a penalty. You just want to let everyone go, Pastor. You just... You know... <laughs> uh, I, I got I got the whole end of the of the New Testament. I can't. The, was it, the guy who wrote it was a terrorist. You know, come on. Right, I know. You know? Yeah, you can't. All I know is that if um, if Donald Trump ever listens <laughs> to this podcast, he's going to be so st- no, he's going to be thrilled because you compared him to a prophet. That's right. Oh, you know okay. what I mean. That's what he's going to take away. That's Donald Trump's takeaway. All right. Well, we'll, we'll um, we hope you've enjoyed our <laughs> return uh, here on uh, Jesus Christ. That's funny. Now, are you uh, going out of town? Are you doing anything for Christmas? Yeah, happy holidays, by the way. Yeah, we hope this was a uh, a great holiday episode for yeah, you to be right, listening exactly. to with your loved ones. Uh, uh, We've got uh, the judgment of God in Nineveh, <laughs> and uh, uh, the, the issues with Muslims and uh, rights, right. uh, thorny political challenges for you to consider over the the Christmas holiday table. <laughs> That's <laughs> or or you know what? How about you just exchange gifts and. Mom's the word on the <laughs> politics. <laughs> Enjoy your Christmas. Um, but uh, no, yeah, I'm going to go over and see my mom. So oh, looking forward to that. Nice. Um, do a little Christmas with her and then a little Christmas with dad uh, the next few days. So. Did you buy them gifts yet? No, actually, I got to do that tonight. Uh, yeah. You got any idea what you get them? I got some ideas. Okay. Got some uh, thoughts. Can you, wanna... can you write it down in front of me? Uh, oh, man. I, you're really going to get her that? I know, right? That's incredible. That's <laughs> unbelievable. She's how gonna be so disappointed. When how, she much, <laughs> how much cash do you have? Look at that. Oh man. I am Okay. Okay, I'm impressed. Uh, sorry the gift doesn't live up to this uh, <laughs> <laughs> mom. Uh what about you you, Pastor? Uh, I am actually uh I'm we're spending time together as a big family, which will be really great and uh and I think we've gotten all our gifts already done. Everything's all set, ready to go. Unbelievably. Exciting. Yeah, it is because I, I hate. It's, it's, I love to wait to the very last day, and I like to run in there when everybody is just buying anything, and you're going like, you know, I'll take that, and they're going, but it's a size twenty-two, and you're like, uh, it doesn't matter, you know, just give it to me. 
Really? That's yeah. what you like? Oh, yeah. The excitement of it is thrilling. Yeah. You, you want to be starring in your own high-stress holiday it movie is just exci- about the toy, yeah. going to the toy store. and When your wife opens the thing and she goes, I'm a size six. And you go, oh, man. Sorry. That is, there's a moment there that is, uh, it's really spectacular. It's, uh, you have never experienced that? Get your mother something that's double her size and see what she says. Okay. <laughs> This is, this is like an O. Henry story. It is. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we just want to wish you uh, happy yes, holidays absolutely. here. Um, and, um, and we'll be back with another episode soon. Okay. It won't be, won't be such a long break. We can promise that. It'll be good. Thank you. God bless you guys. And you didn't even cough, Pastor. I did pretty good. I was drinking the tea. and Yeah. yeah. Thank you. All right. Well, thanks for listening to Jesus Christ That's Funny. You can write us at Jesus Christ That's Funny at gmail.com. You can get the pastor at the sanctuary church what's the website it is sanctuary church org. send in your complaints uh, that's right send them right there <laughs> uh right there uh um, s- tell us how you feel on our email address you can also contact me um well you can find my website at ethanmorecomedy.com so look me up too i got some uh, upcoming dates on there exciting stuff <laughs>